Hello, hello. It is me, your old friend, Adrian Jensen of ProductionCrate.com. Today we're going to be working on this cool heads-up display effect. It's been used a lot lately in a lot of different types of movies, spreading a wide variety of genres. Um, for example, it's an interview. It was, in, it was in Iron Man. It was in Iron Man 3. It was in The Avengers. It was in that other Avengers. Oh, Iron Man 2. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been in the media lately. To make this work, we're going to make use of this one weird trick. Bouju hates us. If that doesn't pique your interest, I don't know what will. So the first step of this effect, not crucial, is to make sure that you have a face that is handsome enough to justify zooming in this close. Um, I didn't really have this available to me, so I just kind of skipped this step. And I think I'm going to get by fine, but if you can do that, it's definitely going to improve your production. As you can see, I've set up some blue lights on the side here to simulate light coming off of the holograms. It's not really going to be super accurate, but I think it looks better with than it would without. The way we're going to track this thing is we're actually going to trick the After Effects 3D camera tracker so we can get a true, real 3D track out of this. But it's going to be a little bit tricky. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, full disclosure, this did not work the first several times I did it. I reshot this footage a bunch of times. So the first time I had tracking markers drawn on my face, and that did help, but Honestly, they would be too big of a pain to remove. So I think you, you're probably better off without them. If you can get away without using them, I wouldn't use them. In another try, I was wearing glasses because I thought that that would be a nice rigid structure for the camera tracker to be able to latch onto. But really, it didn't help because it just caused a lot of reflections and uh, it just made things worse. It was a mess. So actually, what I should have done is not tried to help the camera tracker at all and just shot it like this from the jump. So uh, maybe do that first. But we are going to have to kind of trick the camera tracker into thinking that this is a moving camera rather than a moving face. So here's how we're going to do that. First of all, we're going to want to remove everything from this shot that is not like my head. So this thing here, like the neck, the collar, that's going to throw it off because it's not moving with everything else. And the background is just static. There's no useful information there. So we're just going to grab the pen tool and draw a mask like this that cuts out the neck and the collar. Leave the ear because that is helpful. The head is, it's all good. We don't really need the background. So I'm just going to come back over here like this and boom. So now there is nothing in the shot that is not useful information. Another thing I want to do is I'm just going to tint this because since I have these blue lights on the side, I feel like that color... It's not moving with the rest of my head. I think it's going to confuse the camera tracker and we just, we're already asking a lot of it, you know, so we don't want to push it too far. So let's just add it. Let's add a tint effect to it. And then on top of that, I'm going to add a sharpen as well. And what this is going to do is just enhance the details because I do have a face with a lot of details. I have a beard. I have a bunch of weird, it's, it's weird. I'm just going to, it's, I'm all covered in weird, useful stuff. So. Now that we have those effects applied, temporarily of course, we're going to go ahead and pre-compose this. Make sure you move all the attributes into the new composition. And that way it's all baked in and the camera tracker will actually recognize everything that we just did. So we can either, from the tracking menu here, you can hit this track camera button. There's a second way to do this. You can also apply it as an effect by typing in camera tracker here. And you can apply it from there, so just drag it on. It doesn't matter which one you use, it's exactly the same. So now it's going to analyze that. Uh, this might take a while because it is a confusing shot for the computer. But what I recommend is right off the bat in this advanced tab, you're going to want to change the solve method to a typical uh, mode because otherwise your camera tracker might get confused and assume that it's mostly flat or a tripod pan. And you're not, you're going to get 3D points and 3D motion from your camera, but it's not going to look 3D. We really want a typical solve. So we're just going to force it to do that. There's also this detailed analysis button. If this doesn't work on the first try, then we're going to click that and try again. But this takes longer and it's going to, uh, it generally makes the scale of your scene a lot bigger, which obviously you can, you can fix, but I think we're better off if we don't need the detail analysis, I think we're better off without it. So let's just wait a while and, um, see what happens. All right, guys, welcome to the future. Here we are. The camera tracker has done its thing. I did end up having to use the detailed analysis button, but as you can see, I now have all of these really cool little uh, X's on my face. So that's the end of the tutorial. Bye. Just kidding. That is the end of the good part though, um, because this is basically the hard part done. What we're going to need to do now is just set up a, a camera, maybe some nulls to help us figure out where things should go. So um, I'm just going to like pick a whole bunch of these points here to get a nice average around my nose. 
and we can go ahead and create a solid and a camera. Every time someone uses the camera tracker tutorial, they always add a grid to it. This is no exception. And I'm just going to rotate it a little bit so it's looking right at us. And let's just check it and make sure that it seems to follow in 3D space pretty well. Awesome, that is really cool. This is just great. So actually we can go back into the, the footage itself and we can delete this mask or we'll just maybe disable it, change it to none so that it doesn't actually still do anything. Now this this is really dramatic looking. I'm gonna make this my Facebook profile picture, um, but we don't want that look for what we're doing here. So I'm taking off the sharpen and I'm taking off the tint. And here we are with the grid on our face, which actually we don't need. I'm gonna turn it off. We have the camera, we got what we came here for. So now what we wanna do is pop over to this little website. I don't know if you heard it, it's called productioncreate.com. And um, on this website, you can actually download some pretty sweet assets to use in your pretty sweet videos. So we're gonna do that. In the video section here, we're gonna go to sci-fi and boom, there's a bunch of cute little holograms in here. And we're just gonna download some of them. I want this one, I want this one, this one. Uh, once you've got those imported into the project, all we need to do is basically drag and drop them in. It's really easy. So I'm going to start with this one here, circle number four. We're going to make it 3D and let's just see how it's looking. It looks like it jumped into a pretty good spot already. That's kind of exactly where I wanted it. I just need to rotate it a little bit so it's kind of facing us a little better. Scale looks good already. Move it forward just a little bit. Cool, and don't concern yourself with the color at this point. We are gonna take care of that later. So I'm just gonna grab another circle, bring it in, make it 3D. And if you hold down Shift and parent it to something else, then it will jump to the exact location. So that'll help us line it up easier. And then I'm just gonna move this forward, scale it down. Now we have more of a 3D little aiming device here or whatever. So we can just bring in another one, just do it again. Maybe scale it down or up just different move it forward or back whatever just whatever guys i am not the boss of you just do what feels right and now basically i'm just going to grab a whole bunch of these these elements and just drop them in where i see fit here's one that i want to explain to you real quick i'm going to just do it in a new composition whatever this size is weird i don't know why it came out like that but we have this one called holographic hud map and then we have this one called Holographic HUD Earth. And there's something kind of cool that you can do with these. If you scale down the earth and put it into this hole in the map right here, you can parent that to the map and make both of them 3D. And now check this out. If you highlight the earth one and then head up to layer, come down to transform and go to auto orient, you can change it to orient towards the camera. We do need a camera for this to work. In our other composition, we already have one. All right, but now if we change the orientation of the map, the earth will, it'll move with it, but it'll stay looking at us. And this is cool because it'll kind of give it the illusion of being a 3D object. It's not 100% convincing when you do it like this, but when you have it playing, it's constantly rotating, right? So that, that does help. It adds to the illusion of this being a 3D object. And you can do this with any of the elements that you think it would be fit to do so with. But that's just something cool I thought I'd show you. So your hologram doesn't have to be just made out of only flat planes. You can do stuff like this as well. So that's pretty dope. Generally, I find that it looks best to try to keep these elements kind of as close to your face as possible, unless they're supposed to stick out like the, the little aiming devices there. I'm changing the orientation of some of these to match kind of the orientation of my gorgeous bone structure. All right, that's something. So this is really crude. Um, I don't actually think it looks very good, but it illustrates my point, my series of points. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm just going to grab everything except for the footage. So we need the camera, track solid. I guess we don't technically need that, but I'm gonna use it. Track solid and all of the holograms. We're gonna go up to layer and pre-compose those. Oh, another thing we can do, let's just pop into that real quick. On the, this will look really cool. On the 3D camera, tracker camera, 3D camera, if you come down to camera options, you can turn on the depth of field and this might, might not be the look I'm going for, but I think it looks really good, especially considering it's supposed to be an extreme close up, you know? So you can change the, the aperture, the focus distance or whatever. The focus distance should probably be okay though, since the original solid we made is, is already on my face. But yeah, just, just a little bit, a little bit of that. I think it's gonna look pretty good.
So back in here, we have those holograms on their own separate layer now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change them to a screen transfer mode. And let's add some effects. So first off, I'm gonna add a tint to it, but I'm not gonna tint it all the way. I'm just gonna tint it a little bit. And now I also wanna add the VC color vibrance effect. This is a third party effect. It is from Video Copilot, but it is freezies. So don't even worry, just just go get it if you want it. If you don't, uh, just, just don't. I'm gonna change this to blue. And this is gonna bring the color of our holograms all into you know a more blue range to make sense with the light that we have cast. However, I do still wanna keep some of the color that already exists in it. And as you can see, there is a little bit there, but if you wanna add some more, just go to this vibrance section, twirl it down. And if you turn it down, that basically just blends it back in with the original color. Yeah, so we just need like a little blue, right? And then I'm gonna add a glow as well. Just a regular stylized glow. And we need to bump that up. We can turn up the threshold, or turn down the threshold, I mean. And definitely turn up the radius. The intensity, it's kind of up to you. Just a big, big fat glow. All right, on the footage itself, it'll look better if we, we can turn off this camera tracker effect. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we can add ourselves like a curves effect to it and just kind of bring down the bottom end here. I think that'll look fine. Kind of make those holograms pop a little bit more. And we can go ahead and pre-compose both of those layers. I'm gonna scale this up and reframe it a little bit because it's kind of off center and that gives us more of a, a zoomed in look anyway. And I'm also gonna simulate a little bit of lens distortion as if there's a, you know, a camera really close to the face. So I'm just gonna add a new adjustment layer and we're gonna put a bulge effect on it. And let's scale it way, way up. And we want this to be a perfect circle. So when you have it the size you want it, just take one of the one of the parameters here, hit Control-C to copy it and paste it into the other. So now it's a circle. Um, but I don't want it this extreme, so I'm just gonna turn it down to like 0.4. And there we go. I think that is pretty much all that I have to say about that. Now, uh, don't freak out, but I think it's time we kind of had a talk about where we're going with this relationship. I, I think it's about time we took it to the next level. And by that, I mean you really should subscribe to Production Crate on YouTube. And then we're just gonna, we're just gonna be blasting you with new content all the time. It's gonna get to the point where we're gonna be like, whoa, guys, stop all the new content i really hate all this fresh fresh stuff in my feed it's it's too good i don't deserve it but you do deserve it you do so just go ahead you want to hit that subscribe button on youtube another good way to stay up to date in the world of free stuff would be to follow us on facebook and uh production create actually has an instagram account now so if you buy into that type of thing uh just check that out too and if you want to tweet at me directly you have my permission to do so i'm happy to answer any questions you have or take any requests that you may have as well and i think with that i'm about ready to wrap it up so i appreciate your sitting through this tutorial hope you had a good time i had an amazing time and i will see you sometime soon Buh bye bye